the cell, but how do they have a supreme right to usurp the wishes of the parent if you disagree with the parent's wishes to keep that child from hearing that information perhaps the parent wants to present that information themselves that could be contrary to what you believe is evidence-based or whatever how does in your mind the school system have some kind of right that is supreme to the parent's decision um, that gives the child the right to the other person's perspective on sexuality. Dr. Fuller? Yeah, I uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to that. There's quite a bit that I could um, uh, further clarify that. It seems that it came across a little uh, unclear with some of the language that was just uh, presented. I'm not saying it's from a place of supremeness. I'm saying from the place of ally, the word I used was ally. And it's an additional trusted adult that uh, that student has access to and a space to have access to. Um, did any of us have sexual health education that occurred in schools year after year after year? And additionally, did our parents do that year after year after year? It's addition to the parents. Parents already have um, the opportunity and they have the opportunity to opt out. Um, despite the research that was presented earlier in Nevada, I have similar concerns that other people have voiced that the opt-in will create barriers, um, potential bias as well, because some people can, there's misunderstanding, there's a lot of misunderstanding and there's a lot of stigma related to some aspects of sexual health education. And if that particular youth is not going to get it, um, where would they get it? And with access to internet at this time, you know, my concern is that they get it in places that are inappropriate. And by having the trusted adult with that established relationship with the teacher that they have already, it's an additional source. So I don't see it as supreme. I don't see it as better than. I see it in addition to that parent and whatever that parent um, is providing for that youth. So thank you for the opportunity for that clarification. I think that's important. Senator Townsend. Thank you, and just a quick follow-up to that, and I appreciate you um, giving me that, that answer. So I think it almost, your answer almost further uh, convinces me that this is a question about the child's right to that information versus the parent's right to present that information and withhold the other adult's perspective from their child. So I just want another reminder that the parent has a statutory uh, ability, right, to make that decision. And I think somewhere along the way we forgot that. That you might not agree with what the parent's choice is, but the parent has a legal right to make that choice. And so to say that you know better than the parent and that you're going to uh, assume that the child's rights to your information that you want to present is somehow supreme to the choice of the parent is misguided. And we need to unlearn that and we need to relearn the fact that the parent gets to decide, for better or for worse, what is best for their child. And then, if the, if the material is good, and it's evidence-based, and it's not uh, something off the wall, which I don't think it is, then the parent can look at it ahead of time and say, okay, yeah, that, then I don't have to do it. That's great. But that's the parent's choice. It's not the school's choice. It's not the other adult with the perspective. It's not their choice. It's not the scientist's choice. It's not the child's choice. It's the parent's choice. And I hope that if nothing else, we plant a seed to relearn that fact. Thanks. Time. Senator Thompson. Madam Chair. Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, uh, good discussion today, uh, very revealing. And I just want to go over a few things that I've heard. Um, kids learn from the internet anyway, so they should um, have the ability to learn from a trusted adult other than their parent. Um, that this bill is undermining teaching in Arizona, uh, somehow making it more um, inconvenient so we're, we're placing priority of convenience of teachers over the rights of parents with that sentiment. Uh, tying the hands of educators and those that care about children. Uh, targeting the LGBTQ community. Uh, I, I haven't seen that. Um, 
creating, again, creating barriers to teachers. Th th this seems so much about everything but the parental right to make the decision as to what is put in front of their child. Um, we've heard uh, stories about how difficult it has been for parents to get the curriculum ahead of time and they find out after the fact. I remember, uh, I think it was in Flagstaff, um, a guest speaker was brought into the classroom, a, a, a permission slip went home with the kids asking parents to give permission to allow the kids to hear a guest speaker talk about bullying. So the parents, okay, I'm gonna sign this permission slip and I can give my child a, a, you know, ability to hear a guest speaker about bullying. The children came home and shared what they actually had learned and it had everything to do with sexual content and, and gender uh, issues, not what was presented to the parents. So it was now after the fact that they sought recourse for information that they may or may not have uh, approved if they had known ahead of time. So there has been issues, that's just one of many, where it's difficult for the parent ahead of time to know what is being placed in front of the child because once that information is in front of the child, you can't extract it. So the parent is concerned about, uh, they, they would like to know ahead of time and I support that. Um, you know, we heard a comment about how we are putting our own values on everybody else. And, and I think that's not true. I think that the parent's values are sovereign and that the parent has the right to raise the child in a way that reflects the parent's values, the family's values. And not only do, they, do I think they have the right, they have a statutory right. It was brought up in testimony uh, by myself and others that the parents do have a legal right to direct the education of their minor child. And, and once again, these are minor children. These are not legal adults. We're talking about children and the parent has that right. I just would like to mention that where that statute is. And when you think about the number, it's really easy to remember. So for those listening, we're gonna memorize this statute. It's in the in Title I, the very first title, and we all know the area code for Phoenix is 602. So Title I-602, Parents' Bill of Rights, definition. All parental rights are reserved to a parent of a minor child without obstruction or interference from this state, any political subdivision of the state, any other governmental entity, or any other institution, including the right to direct the education of the minor child, not clean up something after the fact that was taught to their child that they may not agree with, but to direct the education. So the parents absolutely have the right to decide and to see ahead of time, not to try and go on a wild goose chase to see the curriculum before it's shown to their child. And once again, they may see that and be relieved and think, Thank goodness I don't have to do it and approve of it. But they have the right to first look at it to make that decision. So I am in full support of this bill and I think that we've made it into something that it isn't. And uh, I just, I hope that we walk away from this with a renewed reminder that at the end of the day, whether you agree with the parent or not, whether you agree with the curriculum or not, at the end of the day, the parent gets to decide what happens with their child before it happens, not after. So with that, I do vote aye.